We have an incredible update to share with you this morning about a story that aired a few weeks ago on New Day. You'll remember that our Dr. Sanjay Gupta profiled a man named Kevin Hines who tried to end his life by jumping off the Golden Gate Bridge. He survived, and since then he dedicated his life to suicide prevention and raising awareness about mental illness. Here's just a short clip from Sanjay's report. What surprised me then still surprises me now is the story that Kevin tells about the day that he, he jumped off the Golden Gate Bridge. He made this, this pact with himself, which was that if anybody basically is kind to me, if anybody looks at me and says, what's wrong, can I help you, wants to be compassionate in some way, if anybody had done that for him, he wouldn't have jumped. That stuck with me, and I think, it's, I think in some ways it has influenced and, uh, and directed a lot of the other stories that I do. It's never about a single individual. It's always about the circle of individuals, the ecosystem of, of society as a whole. Okay, here's the incredible update. Two women living in Los Angeles saw Sanjay's story, and they say they were inspired to intervene and save a man's life because of that story. Their husbands captured this harrowing ordeal on video of them trying to talk someone off from jumping. And joining us now are those women, Jen Princeve and Tony Musso. And CNN's Dr. Sanjay Gupta is also with us. Oh my gosh, ladies, what incredible, what an incredible story. Just, I know that your, your husbands captured that home video, cell phone video, I guess, of you trying to talk to that desperate man. Can you just bring us back to that day and tell us what happened? We were just chit-chatting and all of a sudden she looked up and we were at the Canaan Bridge overpass and she went, oh my God, is that guy gonna jump off the bridge? And we saw him on the outside of the bridge, just starting to make his way out towards the center of the bridge and, um, the first thing we did was, you know, call 911. We went under the bridge very, very quickly. We said call 911, which we did. And then within like seconds, that interview with Dr. Sanjay Gupta and Kevin Hines just came back to me and I said, we have to turn back. We have to go back. And they said, what? Why? And I said, because I heard this interview and this is what Kevin said, if anyone tried to stop him. And so we immediately, she was like, pull off the road. And we pulled off and we looped back around. We pulled over. There he was just all the way in the center now at this point of that freeway overpass. And, you know, we looked at him and the first thing we said is, you know, we love you. Please oh. don't jump. Sanjay, you know, in that clip we showed, this is exactly what you say you're hoping for in your stories to tell one story that everyone sees and learns from. What is it like to hear this? I mean, it's, <clears throat> it's very emotional. I mean, you know, and Jen and Tony, I mean, you got to save a life. I mean, just let that sink in. You got to save somebody's life. Somebody is here today that likely would not have been without you. That's what we try and do. I think all of us as journalists, right? You, we, we don't get to see the impact, I think, of, of stories that we do. That's, that's the, the challenge sometimes with being a journalist. Here, it's a very tangible sort of thing. And a good reminder that I think it's within all of us to be able to save a life look people in the eye, say hello to people. We turn away when we see somebody who may be mentally ill. Someone has having a cardiac arrest, you pump on their chest. If they're clearly in mental crisis, we often turn away. They didn't, somebody's probably alive today because of it. Tony, what did he say to you? What did you say to him in, in those moments of crisis? He kept saying he just didn't have anything to live for. He, he didn't want to live anymore. So I brought, there was one point where I thought he was actually going to um, fall back and let go. Mm -hmm. And I just put my hands up on um, the fence with him. Okay. And I said, just hold my hands with me and just look at me and listen to me. And I just talked to him gently. And then I said, when I really thought he was gonna jump, I said, you know, imagine what could happen to the people below. You're not only gonna hurt yourself, but potentially there's a family in a car. And, and the two of us have to witness this horrible, horrific act. If you can just get through today, tomorrow might be a little different. You might feel different. You may not have wanted to do this. You just gotta give yourself one more day. Just give me one more day with you. And I promise I'll stay with you. And he agreed to, and then I just kind of started walking him off the overpass. And then when the police came, he got very startled. And mm -hmm. at that point he said, they're gonna arrest me. And I said, I won't let them do that. Just stay with me. And we were about halfway through where I knew that he was actually ready to not 
hurt himself or anybody else. And he got scared and he started to look back and I said, just don't look back. Just keep looking at me and keep walking with me. I'm here with you and I'm not gonna let you go. And I continued to walk off the bridge with him. The police came up and we said, you need to leave us alone. And there were two sets of police officers that came up and you can see them in the video kind of turn away and walk away. And they said, you guys got this, you got this. And you guys tell us so matter of factly, but yeah. the fact is this is extraordinary. I mean, you put yourselves on the line, you hung it all out there uh, and, and really took a chance. And I, you know, hats off to you. It's just remarkable what you did. And Jen, I, I know you. this is this Thank is personal you. for you also. Your, your, your sister-in-law took her own life, correct? She did, yes, yeah, she did. And, um, it, you know, as uh, having it, you know, within my own family, I have gone through what it, you know, what suicide and mental illness looks like. And it's so painful and it's preventable. Um, I don't want to say it's always preventable, but it can be preventable. I feel grateful that we're here and that we're able to even share this story because it's, it is a ripple effect. Sanjay, I mean, just last, you know, hope is also contagious, you know? Yes. And so I know that the suicide rate is a real problem in this country right now. But this is the talking about it like this is the answer, Sanjay. I, I think there, there, there's no question. I mean, suicide rate, it, just the numbers are, are startling. It's gone up 33 percent over the last 20 years. You know, it, we look at what's happening in this country. Life expectancy is dropping. Much of it is self-inflicted and suicide's part of that. Um, but you're absolutely right. I mean, and, and we, it's all within us to, to be able to try and make a difference. It's the lack of hope that I think oftentimes drives people. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and if you can provide it in some way, it can make a huge difference. Yeah, Jen and Tony might not be there, but someone is. There is someone yeah. there always. Sanjay, thank you for yeah, your reporting. You. Jen and Tony, thank you for being heroes. Yeah. Such yeah. heroes. You're we welcome. really do appreciate thank it. Thank you. <laughs> and I want to put up this so everyone thank can see you. it right now. This is, this is the, the, the Suicide Prevention Lifeline, 1-800-273-8255. There is someone always there to listen.